decades and three different ships. Paul, please. <laughs> here. It's been going in and out all day, so. <clears throat> Hi kids, I'm Paul Meyer, and I'm incredibly honored to be speaking today. Scared shitless, but honored and grateful. When I was first asked to speak, I immediately said no, and then I remembered that I promised myself before the voyage that I would challenge myself to try new and scary things. So here I am. of you already know me, but for those of you who don't, this is my third semester at Sea Voyage. The first two were as faculty, and now I'm a lifelong learner. Semester at Sea has meant a lot to me. My oldest son learned to walk and had his first birthday on the ship in fall of 93. My second voyage provided my family with some lasting memories too. My oldest got to jump with Maasai warriors, and my youngest was the torchbearer at the opening ceremonies for the Sea Olympics. That semester is also affectionately referred to as the big wave voyage. <laughs> the funny thing is, is that my sons, age 12 and eight, at the time, don't even list the event as the most memorable part of the trip. <laughs> All of my voyages, including this one, have had big moments and incredible destinations, but that's what's expected. What isn't expected are the little things, sometimes silly, sometimes heartwarming, and thoughtful moments that at the time I may not have fully appreciated, but as I reflect on them now, I am eternally grateful. We've all experienced these se seemingly small and unexpected things, and they've helped forge a bond. We are a community. For me, it's been sharing countless stories at mealtimes, or at the chappy, or on long bus and car rides with students and adult passengers alike, getting to know people on a personal level. For that, I am grateful. Just a few weeks ago, I was approached by two students that I barely knew in the library and asked if I would be their ship dad. I explained that the extended family program was almost finished and my family was full. They said they knew that, but would I be their ship dad anyway? I said, of course, I'm grateful. I had a long running feud. I've had a long running feud with one of the biggest guys on the ship. We glare at each other in the Lido or by the pool and threaten each other regularly with good old fashioned ass whoopings. <laughs> it's been so fun for me that he's just agreed to play along. For that, I am grateful. I was gifted a piano concert for my birthday. We had been trying to coordinate schedules when one day she just pulled me into the Lido Terrace while I was out walking my laps. After about 10 to 15 minutes with the music washing over me, I began to cry. She noticed my distress and changed the tune to a light little ditty and finished. Then she asked me if she could give me a hug and when she did, I began to sob. <laughs> I felt so unworthy of such a magnificent gift. For that, I am grateful. In Valencia, they told us there were taxis right outside the terminal. Guess what, no taxis. <laughs> I had a train to catch and didn't know what to do. A small group of students came out. One of them spoke Spanish and called for two taxis, one for me and one for her group. She gave me the first taxi and made sure the driver knew exactly where I needed to go. For that, I am grateful. On this voyage, I met two students with the same name that both had parents that sailed with me on my first voyage and I had pictures of them. Now I've sailed with two generations of Sassers. For that, I'm grateful. I think it was the second day on the ship, I went to sit on deck eight, on the deck eight, uh, the deck chairs on deck eight. I sat my bony butt down on the hardwood slats <laughs> and a student sitting a few chairs away pointed to the big white bin and said, they had cushions. 
She's been my bestie ever since. I'm grateful. My very first interaction with a sasser, young or old, happened right at the customs counter in Amsterdam. I see an obvious college student standing next to me and I say out loud, semester at sea, and her head whips in my direction. We chatted a bit at baggage claim and then ran into each other at the hotel. Once we boarded, we ran into each other everywhere, every day. My last day in Casablanca, I got sent to Hollywood. And later I heard she had been roaming the ship, actively looking for me. She talked with my lifelong learner buddies and ended up calling my room to check up on me. I've continued to see her almost every day of the voyage. For that, I'm grateful. These are just some of the memories that have helped me feel a part of a community. This is the part I'm gonna miss most. There is good news though. While the community may be separated by space and even time, I know from my past experiences that the bond will remain. I may not see or talk to you for a week, a year, or five years, but when we do reconnect, it'll be like we never left the ship. We have a community of almost 600 people that have a shared experience. We all have a bond. I have some more good news for you. Remember all that talk about Voyage 130? There are 129 previous voyages. That means there are more than 75,000 people worldwide that have had a similar experience. They know how and what you're feeling now and how you've changed because Semester at Sea changed them. Reach out, <clears throat> reach out to the alumni. They're willing to talk and listen. Make sure you always put SAS on your resume. There might just be a sasser in the hiring position. Who knows, someday 10 years from now, a fresh-faced sasser might be applying for a job at your company. Stay involved with the program. The Alumni Association can help you now and in the future, and you can help the next generation of voyagers. We are part of a community that is bigger than just our voyage, and that co community will continue to grow. Always remember that sassers take care of sassers. Thanks for letting me talk to you. I love you and will miss you. For this experience, I am grateful.